Bonk. Okay. Tool nose radius compensation is our next topic. And uh, we'll try and demystify it. It gets a little cryptic. There are three modes for tool nose radius compensation. G41 is tool nose radius compensation left hand. G42 is tool nose radius compensation right hand. G40 is tool nose radius compensation off. Okay. Generally, but not always, left hand G41 is for IDs and right hand G42 is for ODs. Generally, but not always. There are sometimes, for instance, using polar coordinate functions, depending on which direction you're going, you may be in G41 even though you're on the outside of the part. Okay? You'll notice that the G, I emphasized the G40 off command. And why is that? When you are done using tool nose radius compensation, it must be turned off. Like many other things, it is a modal command. There are two different types of commands in NC land. One shot and modal. A one shot command means it's executed once and then completely forgotten after it's executed. It does its thing and it takes a hike. It's gone. A modal command very different animal. Modal command is like the light switch on the wall. You turn it on, it stays on until you turn it off. Okay? That's a modal command. Tool nose radius is a modal function. If you turn it on, when you are done with that tool, you must turn it off. If you don't, very strange alarms come on the screen that seem to have no meaning and or the machine can call up the next tool and take a dive into the part because it will still be remembering the offset and radius from the previous tool. So you can have bad things happen. Turn it off when you're done. Okay, people want to know why would you want to do this? Well. If you look at an insert, say a 35 degree diamond insert, I get my artwork, you'll notice that the nose of the insert, the cutting edge, has a radius molded into it. I used to say ground, but they don't grind tools anymore, they're molded now. Okay? The radius of the tool is the molded radius in here. Depending on what radius, what you're doing, and what you want to do, you will need to compensate for that. The reason is, if you're cutting apart, and you want to accurately cut this chamfer, and accurately cut this radius, and accurately cut this radius, and accurately cut this angle, the machine will know, need to know, how much radius is on the front of this tool? Because if it doesn't, it's liable to overcut here and dig in. It's liable to not cut enough here and leave a sharp edge or a bad radius that won't make muster. It's liable to cut the wrong angle here or here because it doesn't know how much radius is on the front of that tool or which way the tool is pointing. And we address that here too. Okay? Usually on your inserts, somewhere in there, usually the insert code or sometimes on the box, on the specs or in the catalog, 
the insert manufacturer will tell you what the radius is on the nose of the insert. Commonly, you have 007, you have, uh, or 008, you have uh, 016, you have 032, and most of your round fractional numbers are there. You get some customs that will have uh, radii custom ground because somebody needs something you know, special. Uh, depends on what you're doing. Okay? For instance, if you're cutting material, you need a very fine surface finish, a very uh, low RMA, you, want, you may want a bit more radius on the tool. If you're cutting very intricate corners and a lot of fine features, you may want a sharper tool. So it gets in there and cuts all your little features without blending them in to one another. Okay. The machine needs to know. Move on to the next page. 16 and 17. And there's our charts. Now, before we go any further, with tool nose radius compensation, G41 and G42, when you engage them, you must have a ramp in motion to engage and a ramp, in, ramp out motion to disengage. For instance, if I am cutting this part in this direction, if I am cutting this part in this direction, I will need to engage my tool nose radius comp out here as I'm feeding into the part. That's where I turn it on. I turn it off out here where I'm coming off the part. There's a reason why you do that. And I found that out the hard way. Because one time I thought I was going to be a real slick programmer and save lots of time by not turning this on until I was already in the part and turning it off as I was coming up here and save all that time and save three lines of code. And what I got was a part with a great big ramp at the front and a great big ramp at the top. Because when you turn it on and off, the machine is compensating for the radius and it's actually moving in two axes or more to compensate for that radius so that it's on target with what you want. And if you do that in the middle of a part, you're going to get a swoop and ramp on your part. And you will have, what's that word? Oh yeah, scrap! Because it won't be right. So that's how you work it. If you look on page 16 and 17, we see some notes for this. The most important thing on page 16, and I admonish you to take this page to your copier when you get back to the office, copy it, blow it up, and tape it to the machine. And the reason why is you'll see two charts here. The chart on the left with one, two, three, and four are your turning tools and which way your turning tools will point. The machine needs to know which way the turning tool is pointing. It needs to know that. So it needs to know which way so we can ramp in and ramp out correctly. The chart on the right are your radius groove tools. So if you're tree panning, this way, grooving this way, it needs to know that so that it knows where to generate the tool, where to generate the arc, where to generate the angle. Otherwise, you're taking a wild guess and maybe you break a tool or scrap a part. So I always tell people, matter of fact, up until about two months ago, I had this tape to both of my legs. I have a small shop. I had this tape to both of my legs. Move recently because I took them off and the tape, and that's why. So I can remember where they were because I can't remember that stuff. So blow it up, you can tape it to your machine. Okay? All right. Some special notes on G41, G42. One of them, sometimes people like to use them in cycles when they are roughing a part out, okay, or roughing a bore. It's okay to use it in a cycle except for one little thing. 
you have to turn it on before the cycle starts, and you have to turn it off after the cycle ends. And if you don't, you will have an alarm. Okay. Generally, I don't use cutter comb in cycles unless absolutely necessary because I got some real fine details. I don't use it. I leave it only for the finish passes. Okay. Questions? Are we good? Another advantage to using tool nose radius compensation. If I tell the machine I want a 032 corner radius here and I have this set correctly to my insert, I will get an 032 radius within a couple of millions. If your customer is pickier than that, you're in the wrong line of work. Okay? Put the radius gauge on it, put the CMM on it, put the laser gauge on it, it will be 032. Okay? If you're cutting an angle and the, and the customer says, I want 38 degrees, 12 minutes, 18 seconds, and you calculate that out and you cut that angle, it will be 38 degrees, 12 minutes, 18 seconds. Within half a second. If you want it tighter than that, you're in the wrong line of work. Or the customer just doesn't know what they're talking about. Okay. It's also much easier to control tolerances. So, how tight are your tolerances, for example, most of your parts? I mean, generally things vary, but how tight are your tolerances? The tightest is plus one and zero, 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 five. Okay, five tenths, how about you? Five, five tenths, three tenths, okay. You want to hold tolerances like that with a dial board gauge or a snap mic or something like that. If you're using cutter comp, it's much easier. Because now if you bump your offset a tenth here, a tenth there, it's exactly moving it a tenth here or a tenth there. You don't have to worry about, oh shit, I got that radius on the front, Oh crap, what do I got to do? Maybe it's only half a tenth. Move it a tenth, you get a tenth. Move it two tenths, you get two tenths. Because it's compensating for that radius of the tool. Much easier to hold tolerance with. Okay? All right. 